power, not algorithms, is becoming the bottleneck. AI is accelerating. Chips are faster, models are larger, ambition keeps scaling, but the limiting resource isn't silicon, it's electricity. Modern data centers were built for cloud apps. Steady demand, predictable loads. AI is different. Training a frontier model can consume as much electricity as a small town for weeks. Even inference, the act of answering your prompt, adds up across millions of requests. Fleets of GPUs, round-the-clock utilization. The math gets brutal. Hyperscalers know it. Booking power years in advance, negotiating directly with utilities, co-locating next to substations. In key regions, the queue for new grid connections now spans years. If you can't get megawatts, you can't stand up racks. No power means no AI capacity. No matter how many chips you've bought. Why the crunch? First, grid capacity is finite and uneven. Many metros, the ones with fibre, talent and cheap land, are already saturated. Second, AI workloads push peak demand and load factors higher, stressing transmission lines and transformers that weren't sized for this surge. Third, permitting and interconnect timelines for new substations, lines and generation can exceed the pace of AI roadmaps by years. The result? Delayed campuses, phased openings, creative but imperfect workarounds. On-site gas turbines, battery buffers, demand response can help, but they don't solve transmission constraints. Renewable PPAs are essential for sustainability goals, yet the physical grid still must deliver instantaneous power where the data center sits. Ripple effects are already visible. Cloud prices for GPU instances are sticky or rising because capacity is scarce. Training slots are rationed. Enterprises delay projects or downsize models to fit available compute. Even basic workloads compete with AI jobs for power and cooling envelopes inside facilities. National grids feel it too. Sudden multi-gigawatt requests reshape generation planning, accelerate transformer shortages and force regulators to weigh local reliability against hyperscaler growth. In some places, moratoriums or capacity caps slow approvals. In others, fast-track zones emerge, but only where the grid can cope. What changes next? Expect location to outrank almost everything. Proximity to surplus power. Robust transmission. Cool climates will dominate site selection.